Um, I want you to just think about this for me. This idea, if you've got a bunch of numbers and you don't know what their values are equal to, but you know what their sign is equal to. Can you know something about the sign of when you multiply or divide them together? I will point out all of these multiplication signs could just as easily be division because if you have a positive number, its reciprocal will also be positive, right? So therefore, for example, multiplying by a positive ends up being the same in terms of the effect on the sign as dividing by a positive, right? You still don't change the sign if you've got a positive number, um, and you still will change the sign if you have a negative number, regardless of which operation you're doing, okay? So, humor me. If you have a pair of positive numbers, like say, one and two, and you multiply them, what will happen to the sign of the product? It'll also be positive. If on the other hand, you've got a positive and a negative number, regardless of how big or small they are, if you know their signs, then the, the uh, sign of the product will be negative. negative. And you kind of keep going through this, right? This is not complicated. If you've got two negatives, then of course they're going to cancel, leaving you with a positive, positive okay? And this principle continues as the number of factors increases, right? So three positives is still going to be positive. Um, two positives and a negative. So you get the idea, okay? And of course you could extend this to four or five factors, uh, which we are going to look at as we graph. So here's the idea. This is how numbers behave. When you have a look at a function like this, each of the factors of this function behaves just like a number. Like x minus 2 is a number. It's just a number that can change. That's why we call it x a variable, right? So therefore, what I'm going to ask us to do is treat each of these as a line, a graph, on our coordinate axis. So you've got x, you've got x minus 2, and you've got x plus 2. These are the factors of y equals x on x minus 2, x plus 2. So each one of them independently, I can graph. Now, I have the super advantage of having lots of funky colors here that I have access to. If you have lots of colors, then go ahead and do it what I'm doing now. But if all you have is a pencil, then what you're about to draw, what I'm about to draw in orange, maybe just do it sort of lightly because you don't want it to get in the way. y equals x, y equals x minus 2, and y equals x plus 2. They're just straight lines. They look like this. What I've done is each of these, and I'm not even going to label these because these aren't even part of my actual graph. They're just lines that will help me do the real graph. Each of these is a factor, right? Um, each one is going to divide up the graph into sections, okay? So I'm going to notice from the left of negative 2 to the right of negative 2, this factor here, which is y equals x plus 2, it changes sign. It goes from negative to positive. Do you notice that? So therefore, on the left of something like that, one thing is happening. And then to the right of it, something else is happening. The same thing happens at 0. To the left and then to the right, you have a change in sign. And then lastly, for x minus 2, um, 2 is the boundary point. To the left and to the right, you have a change in sign. So I'm going to draw another dotted line here. So now I'm going to get a highlighter out. Let's deal with pink. Remember we said before, if you've got a negative and a negative and a negative, when you multiply or divide them together, you're going to get a negative. Now have a look. Over here, even though it doesn't quite extend that far, over to the left here, the side negative 2 on this side, all three factors are negative. Do you notice that? I don't know what their sizes are, but I don't need to know their size. I just need their sign. Three negatives will give you a negative. That was a bit fatter than I intended, but there you go. Okay? Maybe you want to shade this in, like put your pencil sideways or something like that, so you can shade in this region over here. Let's pick something a bit finer, shall we? Now, you can see, when you transition from the left of negative 2 to the right, you now no longer have three negative factors. Have a look at the signs. You've got a positive and two negatives down here, right? So when you multiply or divide them, what will be the result? It will be positive. And in fact, what you can see is it just switches up and down each time it crosses, each time it changes sign. So you can see I've got this guy over here, and then this guy over here. Okay, that one that I did first is bothering me because it's so messy, so I'm just going to fix it. There we go. That's a little bit better. Right, question. Um, 
so sometimes you have like a parabola in the middle, and that's when it doesn't change. What does that look like? Yeah, I'll get to that. I, I promise I'll show you. Uh, this sheet, if you look far enough, uh, enough ahead, you'll see one of those. Okay? All right. Now, I've got the regions through which this area goes through. Okay? Um, there are also going to be some asymptotes on this function. Some of the asymptotes are easy to see. In fact, I've sort of drawn them already. There are two vertical asymptotes. Where are they? X equals negative 2 and X equals positive 2. So I'm going to put them in solidly now to indicate, yep, I see what's happening here. X is negative 2 and X is positive 2, like so. There's also a horizontal asymptote. Can you help me work out what the horizontal asymptote is? It's going to be, now I'm going to keep pressing you on this, right? It's not 0. It's y equals 0, right? Asymptotes are lines. Lines can't be numbers. Lines are equations, right? And I know you said, oh, 2 and negative 2. But those are vertical asymptotes. So they're x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. How do you know that? Limits. If you think about limits, right, the horizontal asymptote comes from, let me just finish drawing all the way across. It comes from the behavior of your function, this guy up here, as x approaches infinity all the way to the right, and x approaches negative infinity all the way to the left. Yeah? And you can quickly crunch some numbers in here and you're like, oh, that denominator is getting massive, right? So therefore you're gonna get a very small number. Okay. Last little thing I want to do, on any graph, the intercepts are usually pretty important things, right? Can we find the x-intercepts of this, or the y-intercept? I don't know. In this case, when you put in x equals 0, because x is in the denominator, sorry, numerator, you just get y equals 0, right? So in fact, it passes through the origin right there in the middle, which is weird at first, because you're like, wait, that's an asymptote. But you can pass through this horizontal asymptote. Why is that? Horizontal. Because the horizontal asymptote is about limits. Limits over here and limits over there have nothing to do with the center of the graph. Okay. So now I have everything I need. I've got the regions that I have to pass through. I've got the asymptotes I'm supposed to approach at the right spots. And I also have an intercept. So I'm just going to go from left to right and draw it how it has to be. Have a look at this section over here. What do you think is happening? You get yeah, you just you you just sort of locked in in this area, right? You've got to do something that looks like that. Right? It looks like one branch of a hyperbola, doesn't it? Okay. Um, there's nowhere else you can go. You can't possibly be positive because we already shaded that region, and you've got to get towards these asymptotes. So that gives you the rest of the shape. There's nothing that can like curl around or something like that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, students often. When they're drawing this, they're kind of like, oh, let it curl a little bit. Don't let it curl a little bit. Get your rubber out. Fix that thing. That's not even a function anymore. That's a, what's it called again? Relation. This doesn't pass the vertical line test. It collides twice. So that would be a relation, right? That's not the shape that you want. Uh, <laughs> this is the shape that you want. And as long as you're approaching your point. While we're looking at that kind of shape, you notice the same kind of thing is happening in the top, right? But, but reversed. Right? So you're locked in in that top area and you've got the two asymptotes. So therefore you've got a kind of similar shape like that. Okay, last thing is the middle now. Last thing is the middle. You've got an asymptote over here on the left. You've got an asymptote over here on the right. And you know you're going to pass right through the origin. So therefore, you can almost trace it out, can't you? It looks a little bit like a tan graph, doesn't it? Looks a little bit like a tan graph. And that, in fact, that's probably the closest comparison that I would make. And there you go. There's the graph. Ta-da!